Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I want to show you a new product and it's going to be another Blitzwolf product which is supplied to me by Banggood uh, free of charge for this video so thank you Banggood for doing that and this is the BWS02 and WS stands for weather station and this is a normal looking weather station which has an external sensor but the only difference well the main difference for this one it actually it connects to the internet so it is able to show you weather details that is not provided by any sensors but it's provided by the internet so as you can see here on the screen and also in the uh, Tuya app that it's able to show you the current uh, weather uh, as in terms of an icon it also shows you information like the UV index, the wind speed, the pressure, which it all gets uh, from the internet. And also it's able to show you information such as like how the uh, outside temperature feels like. So what is the temperature based on the um, internet weather details. It also can show you the outside temperature based on this unit, which uh, I used to have outside. I just brought it in for this review video. And of course you get time information like the current time, the date and the day of the week. And as you can see on the mobile app, you see the same information. So if you want to monitor something remotely over the internet, now you can do that. Uh, you can monitor the sensor inside this unit and also this uh, RF sensor as well. And you can even uh, ask for temperature readings or temperature history. So as you can see, this is how it looks like. I mean, I have this unit for a, uh, probably about two weeks now, so I don't have an awful lot of data. But for example, if you look at the outdoor sensor, probably you will see a rise because I just bought it in from, uh, uh, from the patio. It was uh, measuring the outside temperature. So you can see the, uh, the values here and you can also look at humidity. I have reviewed quite a few Blitzwolf products on my channel and I'm usually quite positive with, uh, with all of them. And I think probably I have to leave some criticism for this particular unit. Maybe it's not a criticism for the weather stations uh, from Blitzwolf in general because uh, actually there are quite a few different products available so they are all called weather stations and they all have Wi-Fi connection so they can show you uh, a weather forecast but the way this is implemented it is not able to answer some of the questions that I personally usually have when I wake up in the morning for example can we expect rain today or what is going to be the maximum temperature today because all it does, it shows you the current temperature and also the current weather. So at the moment, it's, you know, it's cloudy, um, partly cloudy outside, so I can see the partly cloudy icon. But let's say if it's going to rain in the afternoon, it's not going to show me that, not going to show me the rain icon until it actually starts raining. So it is showing the actual weather details and not showing the forecast information. So just keep that in mind if you are deciding to purchase this unit because if you are particularly interested in a weather forecast or to know what is going to be the weather today you probably have to look around for a different uh, Blitzwolf weather station which can do that. But on the other hand there is information on the screen where you actually want the current value for example the UV index I mean you know if you want to go outside I mean obviously it doesn't apply now but in the summer you want to know whether the UV is really high and you have to protect yourself. Let's have a general look of this device. First of all um, you are getting basically two different devices uh, or maybe three if you count the cable as well. So there is this uh, large round uh, inside unit or the display unit which uh, when I saw this uh, on Banggood I quite like it because I like the fact that it's actually quite large. It is really easy to read the numbers and also the display is really bar bright. So it is definitely easy to see in a well-lit room. And on the top you have a touch button and with the touch button you can control the brightness in three different settings. So there is a very low settings and I usually use it in high. <clears throat> And uh, we are going to see in the app that you also have a night mode. So you can set time between, let's say, uh, 9 o'clock and 6 a.m. in the morning. And in that period, it would automatically dim to the lowest setting. So if you are planning to use it in a bedroom, you have that option to automatically dim the screen as well. This unit is designed to be used in two different ways. You can use it on a table like this. And for that, there is a kickstand at the back and also there is a rubber feet so it stands on its uh, 
uh, let's say side very securely it doesn't you know move around but if you don't want to use it like that you can fold this in and you also have a hook in here so you can put it on the wall and actually there is a nice feature in terms of the power as you can see there is a power input here if you want to use it on a kickstand but if you want to use it on a wall there is also a power input here on the side so you can power it from two different ways there is also an output here so it can charge your phone at 5 volts 1 amp so if you are using at a nightstand where you are using your single usb charger for powering the device at least you can also charge the phone using a cable that is connected here besides these we have two buttons here the wi-fi and the sync and a pair the wi-fi button is used to initiate the wi-fi pairing by long pressing on it and long pressing the sync and a pair button is going to sync the external uh, RF temperature sensor. So this is the small temperature sensor which is used to either measure the room temperature or to measure outside temperature. So I'm using this outside. It uses a fairly large and for me an unusual battery. So it's CR2477. But other than that it works just like any other RF buttons. You long press on the pair button on the, on the back and then there is like a sync button that you press here to initiate a, like a data transfer or sending the data from this unit. And then the unit is going to beep that it recognizes the outside sensor. And as you can see on the screen, it shows you the inside temperature, which is the temperature that this unit is measuring. So it has also a built-in temperature and humidity sensor. And then here where it says out and the CH1, it shows you the, uh, the outside sensor or the external sensor. And it also shows you a battery level. So that's going to give you an indication if this is running low on battery. And you can pair up to three units uh, with this uh, inside unit. And by the way, if I show you the, um, the box or one of this molding that this unit came in, as you can see, it has three holes. So maybe there is an option to buy three external units when you purchase this main unit, but mine came with one. And since I'm talking about the packaging, so there is a place for the USB lead and there is a place for a charger, but it didn't come with a charger. So maybe initially uh, this was sold with a USB charger, but uh, it is not done anymore. Maybe this is uh, Apple's influence. So at the moment you are just getting a USB lead and I'm just using a mobile phone uh, power bank to power it just for this video. There are no other buttons on this unit. Obviously you don't need buttons to set the time and a date and any other information because it has Wi-Fi. So you connect it to your Tui app and you can do all the administration within the uh, Tui app itself. And just to recap on what is available on the screen. So you have an icon for the current uh, weather display and you have uh, things like a cloud and a sun and the rain and the snow icon. Um, so for example, it doesn't have an icon for a fog. So if the weather is foggy, it's still going to just show you cloudy. Um, obviously it hasn't snowed yet, so I haven't seen the snow icon, but I definitely see the, uh, uh, the rain icon. Probably the other funny quirk is that it doesn't have a moon or a star logo. So if you have a clear night, it's just going to sh show you sun. Or if you have a cloudy night, it's going to show you clouds with, with the sun. So it, it doesn't have a separate icon for that. But other than that, it does you know, show you all this information. And I have no information on what uh, internet weather service this uses to get the, the data because it's not mentioned in the document. Also, it not mentions how frequently it gets updated. So, um, I mean, I do see these things updated during the day. Uh, I would say probably it's about an hourly or maybe every second hour, something like that. So besides the weather details, you see the temperature, which, so this is the current temperature and humidity outside, which is uh, based on the internet data and also that you have a fields like uh, temperature as well. And if you are using the RF unit as an external sensor, which I have just placed outside, so we should see this temperature dropping, then, you know, this piece of information is a little bit redundant because you are seeing the outside temperature from your unit and also from the internet. So, I mean, these, so these temperature and humidity tend to, tend to be the same values after all. I mean, you know, with a little bit of difference. On the top, you get uh, three additional fields, which is the UV index, uh, the wind speed and the pressure. So these three details are also uh, getting downloaded from the internet. 
The in temperature is obviously the temperature this unit measures. So this also has a built-in temperature and the humidity sensor. Um, by the way, in terms of the accuracy, I find this to be as accurate as any other uh, temperature and humidity sensor. So um, I don't think that it has any drift or it's showing extra uh, temperature or humidity. So I have no issues with that. And finally, on the lower part of the screen, you can see the actual time and the date and the day of the month. And by the way, when you set this one, you can set this manually. So you can set it to a time and a date in a different location, maybe in a different city, or you can just say that it should show the time and a date for your location, which is the location what you set in the TUI application. But we will see how it looks like when we open up the app. Being a Blitzwolf device, you can use this device either with the TUI app, the Smart Life app, or the Blitzwolf app. I'm using two apps, so I'm going to show you the how the screen looks like here, but it's going to be pretty much similar, whatever companion app you choose. I want to say a few things about a pairing, but it is actually very fairly easy. You click on the plus button and you select sensors. So I just selected Wi-Fi sensor, which is the top here. And I don't know whether it's some uh, special functionality, but what I also noticed that uh, when I came into the pairing, I didn't even have to go through the entire process but I, because I was getting a pop-up that uh, a new device has been found. So maybe this is because it has built-in Bluetooth as well. I'm not really sure. It is actually not mentioned in the document. So the documentation says just follow the normal pairing process. And when you do pairing, you have this Wi-Fi button here and you just long press it and that initiates the pairing process and you will see this Wi-Fi icon is blinking. But other than that, the process is very straightforward. So you just find the device, you give it a name and you put it into a room. And this is how it looks like out of the box. So it shows you all the information that you can also see on the main screen. So the current, the date and the time. You can also see the location here, the weather details, and then the two sensors. Well, one is the built-in sensor, which is this one. And the other one is the sensor that I've just placed outside. And you can click on these history icons that is going to show you device or sorry, sensor history. Uh, this is something that I've already shown in the beginning of the video. So even if you are not using this device as a weather station, but you want to be able to monitor temperatures maybe outside or in a greenhouse or you know somewhere in the house, you can just use this device because it automatically uploads the data into the cloud and you can always review you know temperatures uh, um, by let's say by day or week or month and this is stored in the cloud and of course as you go back in time it gets automatically aggregated and what I haven't mentioned in the beginning of the video is that uh, besides actually showing you the weather or weather details it can also show you or send you alarms when some of the weather details are going out of certain bounds that you can configure so if i for example just click on the temperature reading here in the inside unit i can enable uh, this alarm and say that i want an alarm if the temperature if the inside temperature goes outside the minus 6.2 and the 2.2 range and if i save that we are going to see that on the next update the device gives me a small beep uh, which actually just an indication that there is an alarm so something goes out of bounds of course if you set it to you know multiple sensors and multiple values you won't be able to tell which one is give you an alarm but as you can see on the main app the actual reading turns red and there is also an alarm button we are going to see how these alarm settings are going to be used so again, if you're monitoring a room and you are concerned about if uh, there is a freezing condition in the room, maybe in a shed or in a cellar, you can just use that and then, you know, set an alarm on the outside sensor. Let me go into the device settings because, well, after all, this is a sensor, you can't really do anything else. First thing is uh, they, there is an obvious place for the settings, which is the, uh, the usual to your device settings. But here you can only set a few things. For example, you can rename the device, change the icon or put it into a different room, or you can share the device or create a group of these devices, which I mean, I don't see how the group makes sense for uh, sensors. But anyway, the, this is just a generic function. But if you go back to the main screen, you can click on the uh, in this blue part of the screen as well, just to get to additional settings. So for example, if I click on the time, then you can see the time settings. Here you can set the time manually as well, 
or you can just say that I want to use the network time. So, you know, whatever time that it uh, synchronizes from the internet and whether you want a 24 hour setting or you want uh, the US uh, AM PM format or 12 hour setting. So I like this one because uh, for example, we just have gone from the daylight saving, so summer time to winter time and the weather station has adjusted the clock uh, absolutely automatically. So that's the time setting. And if you click on the main details, the rest of the screen, then you can see that you have access to the rest of the settings here. So for example, I can set the brightness of the screen also here from the app. I can uh, enable the night mode. So as you can see between 9 p.m. and uh, between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. the uh, display automatically turns to the lower set lowest settings. I can specify whether the, this buzz alarm is going to be a, just a single ring or a continuous ring. I can also set whether this visual alarm should have any impact on the screen. So maybe I can just have that piece of the information which is creating the alarm to flash once or flash continuously. So again, if you are setting multiple alarms, for example, on the UV or pressure or temperature, you probably want to set the continuous flashing. So you will get the beep and then when you walk up to the screen, you can see which value is flashing. And you also have the option to change the unit of measure. So for example, I can change the uh, display to Fahrenheit and all the temperature now changes to Fahrenheit and the same with the wind speed and the pressure. You have kilometers per hour or miles per hour. And also for the pressure, you have uh, hectopascals or millibar that you can choose from. Let me just set this back to centigrade for me. And also you have the option to turn off uh, various parts of the screen if you are not interested in that information. I mean, if you find the screen really cluttered, probably you can just reduce that. Let's say you are not too much interested about the pressure because you can guess that that pressure based on the icon, you can maybe turn it off and then, you know, leave just the temperature and the, uh, and then the UV. But then of course you are losing a lot of information. But even if you turn them off, you can always come to the companion app and uh, see those values here. So let me just turn all of these back on. And that's basically the end of the settings. And if I go outside, there is one more screen element I can click on, which is uh, the, you see the humidity, the UV index, the wind speed and the pressure. So if I click on that, this is where I can set alarm on these values. So again, if you want to get an alarm when, when the UV goes above nine, uh, you can change, set it like this. The only part of the screen you can't click is the location that you can see here. And uh, you do this by setting your home location. So if you go to home and home management and you select your home, you see the location option here. And that uh, is the location that uh, this weather station is also going to use. So we have covered all the internal settings and uh, we have also seen previously how you can set up the alarm on your external sensor. So this is the, um, okay, not external, this is the local sensor that is built into the unit, but you have the same functionality for the outside sensor. So if the outside sensor measures a certain uh, temperature or humidity, uh, your inside unit skill still can beep and give you an alarm and also if you've configured the flashing it can also flash those values on the screen. And the last thing that I wanted to cover is the smart functions because you can also use this unit to also trigger uh, smart scenes or automation. So when I select when the device status changes and the Blitzwolf weather station, as you can see, there is a lot of settings that you can choose from. So you can create triggers on any of the internal or the external temperature and the humidity sensor. You can, e you can even uh, create triggers based on if the brightness is changed on the unit. Or for example, if the pre pressure, the wind speed uh, is uh, changed. And also here, there is a Chinese option, which I have no idea what that is. And of course, if you, for example, you set the outside temperature, let's say this is going to be the sub one temp. And let's say if it's, you know, less than, you know, zero degrees, then for example, on next, you can run a device. And for example, let's say you have a smart switch, the BSS six or five, and you can turn that on. And that's going to turn on a heater in a room where you don't want anything to freeze. And with this, we got to the end of the review of this uh, Blitzwolf weather station. If you are interested in this product, I'm going to leave purchasing links in the video description, but that would be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.